Yep. She sounds like a shit box. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is Pearl. Yeah, why don't you give us a rundown on her, bud? This is a 1985 cabin bed on a 77 frame, I do believe. Uh, I bought the truck for 1500 bucks, the 77. It had a mud drag motor built in it. Gauges everywhere. They're all gone. Don't mind the mess. She's just been kept running. This is the intake that we we're talking about. Carburetor is twisted to one side. It is a single plane tarantula, AKA spider intake. It is a 396 cubic inch, worked to a 419. SM465, manual trans. She got a new carburetor, new distributor not too long ago. But she is the beast. Yeah, she's a pretty badass whip. <laughs> whip? <laughs> whip? Cool whip. Yeah. Um, it's just the uh, most reliable vehicle in my driveway. And over the new ones even. I just bought my wife a 2007 Envoy and it took a crap. So we're daily driving Pearl for right now. But she does everything from mudding to rock crawling to firewood, you name it. She's been there, done it, and kicks ass at it. Oh yeah. So your windshield you got set up. Uh, I really like your mount on this, man. <laughs> it is a Reese receiver, cut down, and welded back together with some plates that I got from a guy that worked at a milling factory, whatever you want to call it. They cut these big plates out, and this is what they throw away. So I had somebody bring me about five or six of them. And so with the body lift, it just fits perfectly right up there on top of the frame and tucks underneath the lip here for the grill. I like that. So uh -huh. uh, 16,000 pound Ingo. Ingo has worn guts in it. So we don't cover it. We just let it run. <laughs> As you can see, the beautiful, <laughs> beautiful <laughs> lift block wrap. Yes, that is some freaking badass stuff actually adam and i were talking yesterday about we should just get some stickers made up that way you could wrap your body lift pucks in like a beer can sticker see and you guys you guys put soda wraps on your beer cans and i put beer cans on my body block <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah so for tires you're running the 37. Yeah, the, yeah. H, the H1 or the military uh, Hummer tires. Yes. Uh, Goodyear uh, Wranglers, right, MTs? Yep. Yeah. They're a little heavy for the truck and the gears, but they do for right now. They're the street tires. We have the big tires at home. Yeah. Some some 40-inch boggers on 15-inch bead locks. You guys are thinking about getting some of these because you can pick these up for relatively cheap. These are an extremely heavy tire. They wear good, but they mud terribly okay i'll let you know uh they just they don't clean out real well the and lug space 16 five rims suck yeah if they get low on air you can kick them off the bead yeah yeah you can only get them these things on a 16 five so that's what the humvee runs i like your uh your steps there that you got man to get in it it's custom built yep. although we broke the braces off of them hmm <coughs> <laughs> we've got 84 door we've got a 75 76 door over there stag handle shifter tracker ball yes <laughs> yeah that's key right there having that when you're slinging some mud and then yeah as you guys can see the antler freaking shifter knob there that's pretty awesome so what's up with this license plate you got in the back huh so one of my favorite stores OCS Oregon California Supply was selling 
permits to go tweaker hunting. And as you can see, there's no bag limit and no tagging required. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, man. I'm also gonna let you guys know, this is your reminder, if you're really enjoying the content that we're putting out, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button down there. That's gonna let you know every single time we come out with a new video. Get around to the back here. Uh, dual tank or single tank? Dual tank. All right. 60 gallons, 30 in each. Damn. So, with this size motor and the carb set up, you got 60 gallons. That gets you from one gas, gas station. station. Gas station. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This is what we use for the four-wheel drive in this truck. We can't keep the turn lock-ins. It likes to snap them and eat them for lunch. So, we just solid plug, put a spring in there and a snap ring, and it holds it in there underneath the metal cap. Yeah. Hot dang two overload on each side leaf springs that don't squat very much pretty stiff pretty stiff and she is beat off of every tree rock bank you know this is from a boat that's that's the nose of the boat the trailer <laughs> i was in my field at my house and i couldn't jack the trailer off because it was mud so I decided to snap the trailer off. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out great, huh? It did, and then I proceeded to run over the boat. <laughs> we'll get you pictures of that. It's still in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. She's just a good freaking country truck, that's for sure. But this is, this is my baby. I hope you guys have pity on me. I love Chevys and he's got me working on all these Fords. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Oh, it's a badass truck. I like it a lot. So it's freaking, and that's <coughs> intake. It definitely threw me for a loop. Cause I was like standing right over here. He was working on it yesterday. And I'm just like, dude, what's, why is your carb twisted all cockeyed? I've never seen an intake like that. I've never seen one, not with twist like that, um, until I actually got my hands on this powertrain. Yeah. So Adam and I both did some research uh, yesterday, and this is kind of a rare, older intake. Elderbrock made one, it was like uh, similar to this, called the Torx 2 or something like that. Torx 2, T-O-K-R-2. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of a, Mid to uh, high RPM uh, intake is what I read, but it is a single plane, so which would be a, a torque, uh, a torque like a low RPM intake then, right? Um, I don't know that it has anything to do with the RPMs, but it definitely gives you the torque. Yeah. And we can get some RPMs out of this motor. It's seen 6,500 RPMs for sure. <laughs> Floating some valves. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, floating. They were floating. They were swimming. <laughs> nice. And so rear end for this thing, probably what is it? A fifteen volt corporate. All right. Full float. Full float. Full float. Three seventy three gears. And front probably down to forty four. Yeah. All right. It doesn't like those. It's like the fourth or fifth one that's in there. Yeah. I mean, that's the scoop with uh, three quarter tons and they pit the 44 in Dodges, Chevys, and Fords. And so, and it's kind of the potentially grenade there. So, especially once you start lifting and riding really hard on them. So. Did you show them my, uh, my header? Oh, no, I didn't. I think we glazed over that. He's got a customized header over here on this side. Yeah. Um, let me get the camera straight. Let's see here. Here we go. If you look right there, man, <laughs> number number three cylinder. Yeah. You can get a real good shot from the fender well in there. Yeah. So you said what happened with uh... um they were super hot, rotten, rooting, rotten in the mud, and I had this branch come in in the wheel well and just pushed her right in. Yep. <laughs> wow. I bet they were glowing. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Yeah. And my favorite part about this truck is if you ever run your batteries dead in the woods and you take the chain off of your chainsaw and you can uh, take a boot lace or some paracord and run a loop, pull the belt off your alternator and turn your key on, 
as long as there's battery voltage to the alternator, the alternator will ignite and you just run your chainsaw and charge your battery back up and away you go. Dude, that's a hot <laughs> tip. I like that. That's oh, badass. we should do that. Yeah. yeah. We should demonstrate we that. We should demonstrate that. We will demonstrate that. That's a badass and tip, dude. It, it works. Swear to Christ, it works. Hell yeah. So I love the custom door here uh, you did with uh, Joe. So um, I was looking at that the other day. Four or five years old. He's 12 now. And this is just a, a project we did after I busted the first door up. And we spray painted over our hands. And it's been there ever since. Everybody knows this truck. Hell yeah, that's badass, man. That is way cool. She ain't pretty to you, but she sure as hell pretty to me. Hell yeah, <laughs> I dig it. And my Jeep, my Jeep Cherokee bucket seats. Yeah. Freaking riding good, man. Oh yeah, they are even electric. <laughs> yeah. And the cool part is, is you give them a hot wire, you adjust your seat where you want it, and anybody that gets in the truck stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Does the uh the spot light up on the roof? Does that work? That is not finished yet. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna change that and put it in a vertical mount instead of a slant mount. It's actually supposed to go here with that style. Okay. But uh yeah, we just haven't got there yet. Alright. Right on, dude. Well I appreciate you showing us your uh your truck, man. Thank you. So tomorrow morning, Adam and I are flying down to California, not flying, we're driving down to California with the truck and the trailer because we found a 2002 F450 crew cab four wheel drive that we're going to be picking up. So pretty good, decent, or a really good deal on it. We're going to bring it back, go over the truck, see what's going on with it, and then kind of decide what we're going to do with it. Not sure if we're going to end up using it as a base platform for a build or if we're just going to end up you know, keeping it as a driver for ourselves or if it might end up being potentially just something that we flip. I'm not totally sure yet until we get through the truck and just see kind of where it's at. But appreciate you guys' interest in freaking Adam's truck, dude. Pretty badass. We'll talk to you soon.